Do you believe in God? Well, I used to, and the idea of leaving God was terrifying to me, but I just couldn't convince myself that it made sense. It felt like I was being dragged away from someone I loved. I see. So you just didn't want there to be any good evidence for God. What? Divine hiddenness is an argument against the existence of certain types of gods. This argument states that if a god exists who is all-powerful and who wants to have a loving relationship with us, such as the Christian god, then we should all at least know that this god exists. But we don't all know this. So why is God hidden? Now, of course, the knowledge of God's bare existence is not sufficient for a loving relationship with him, but it is a necessary first step. You cannot have relationships with people who you don't think are real in the first place. Propositional knowledge is a necessary first step for filial knowledge. So why does anyone lack the propositional knowledge of God? One of the most popular responses to this argument is to say that every person who is not a Christian, and who does not eventually become a Christian during their life, is just too emotionally resistant to the idea. Every non-Christian is just so hopelessly biased that even if God's existence was made crystal clear, even if God's existence is crystal clear, they would still not believe it. Just like the smoker who does not believe that smoking causes cancer, or the 18th century American slave owner who just cannot be convinced that African people really are full human beings, Atheists and other non-Christians are just so invested in their ideas and their lifestyles that they cannot accept Christianity. This is why they never seem to get it when you show them the evidence, and perhaps this is why God doesn't bother appearing to them. To put it another way, this response to the problem of divine hiddenness is essentially saying that all non-believers who are otherwise capable of having a relationship with God are resistant non-believers, and that there is no such thing as a reasonably non-resistant non-believer. There is no such thing as a person who simply, genuinely, is not convinced by the evidence for Christianity. Anyone who is not convinced by the evidence for Christianity is just too emotionally resistant to the idea. If God exists and wants me to be saved, and I need to accept that salvation in some capacity, then... I need to first at least know that he exists, mm -hmm. and yet there are atheists who really would believe in Jesus Christ and God if if they could. Were, would they? Awkward silence. When an atheist tells me, if you just gave me the evidence, I'd believe, I go, uh-huh. That's not how your brain works. That's not how we work as humans. That's just isn't the way it is. Flat earthers exist, okay? Yeah. The evidence the earth is round is there, and there's people who don't believe it. Don't give me this nonsense that if I just gave you the evidence, you'd change your worldview. So if you had a sincere non-believer, a, a, a non-believer who was sincerely looking and searching for God, but not finding God, that would perhaps prove that God doesn't really love them and want them saved. There's a few ways to poke holes in this argument. One is to challenge how much sincerity is really going on in this person. What I'm suggesting is divine hiddenness requires a certain kind of person that may not exist. But I would question whether there is such a thing as long-term non-resistant non-belief. So my own view is that um, the evidence for Christianity is such that anyone who is fully informed and takes it upon himself to impartially examine uh, the evidence with a heart open toward accepting God as Lord will, in the long run, come to find Christianity to be true and well-supported. Now, careful viewers will notice that the problem of divine hiddenness does not require that the person who presents the argument is themselves a non-resistant non-believer. It simply requires that there is now, or has been, at least one non-resistant non-believer sometime, somewhere, in the history of Christianity. If such a person has ever existed, then something is wrong with the Christian idea of God. And so, one of the most popular responses, as we've just seen, is to deny that such a person has ever existed, or at least to argue that such a person is unlikely to have ever existed. As you might imagine, I have some issues with this response.
If this is an acceptable line of argumentation, if the Christian apologist really expects the non-Christian to accept that there is probably no such thing as a lifelong non-resistant non-believer, well then, I'm just going to assert, from now on, that there is no such thing as an honest Christian. In fact, at no point in the history of Christianity has there ever been an honest Christian. There is not now, nor has there ever been, one single Christian who was genuinely searching for the truth and who remained a Christian. Every single Christian is just too addicted to the emotional high of believing in God to accept the fact that Christianity is obviously false. And if you're a Christian watching this video, then you are intellectually dishonest simply by being a Christian, and the only way to prove me wrong is if you eventually agree with me and my worldview. Don't worry, stupid, you'll get there eventually. And if you don't, well then, you just weren't being honest enough. Now, what can a Christian apologist say about this claim? I'm sure no Christian apologist would agree with what I've just said, but where did I go wrong? If the Christian apologist can just assert that every person who has ever disagreed with them was emotionally resisting the truth of Christianity, then why can't I assert that every single Christian is emotionally resisting the falsehood of Christianity? There seems to be parity here. You cannot accept one without accepting the other. Of course, these types of unfalsifiable accusations against millions of people you've never met only seem plausible when they're directed at the other team. Frankly, I don't buy it in either case. I think there are now and have historically been at least some lifelong Christians who simply wanted to know what is true. If I can admit that, then why can't these Christian apologists admit that there are now or have historically been at least some lifelong non-Christians who simply wanted to know what is true? Well, maybe it's because Christianity requires that this is false. If there was even one reasonably non-resistant non-believer at any point in history, then the God of Christianity, who specifically wants a relationship with every person, would not exist. And we can't have that, now can we? In fact, let's imagine how the apologist would react if my worldview was equally... fragile. Imagine if my worldview, as a naturalistic atheist, could be disproven by the existence of a single lifelong Christian who was sincerely searching for the truth. A single non-resistant Christian who genuinely wanted to know what is real and what is not, but who did not become an atheist during their lifetime. Imagine if, had any such Christian ever existed, my atheistic worldview would be proven false. But fortunately, I say, it is highly unlikely, nigh impossible, that any such Christian does now or has ever existed, and therefore my worldview is totally safe and plausible. What a relief. Does anyone watching this video seriously think that a Christian apologist would let me get away with this? Do you really think a Christian apologist would accept that my worldview is plausible if it rests on this assumption? No, there's no way an apologist would let me get away with this. Surely there has been, at some point in the last 2,000 years, one single, sincere, non-resistant Christian who genuinely wanted to know what's true, but who did not leave Christianity. I really hope we can all agree on something so simple. In turn, there is no chance that I am going to let Christian apologists get away with their assumption that there has never been even one lifelong non-resistant non-Christian. Surely there has been, at some point in the last 2,000 years, one single, sincere, reasonably non-resistant non-Christian who genuinely wanted to know what is true, but who did not become a Christian. But apparently, we can't all agree on something so simple when it's inconvenient for Christian theology. When Christian apologists assert that there has never been a lifelong, reasonably non-resistant non-believer, in my opinion, they are doing the philosophical equivalent of shouting fake news, accusing everyone who disagrees with them of being a bad actor. They seriously expect people to believe that, for the last 2,000 years and throughout the modern world, there has never been one single person who died as a non-resistant non-believer of these apologists' particular religion. Mom, you can't possibly believe that. I have to, honey. 
To be perfectly frank, in my experience, apologists like Inspiring Philosophy, Mike Winger, and Jonathan McClatchy are the kind of people who will freely invent any unfalsifiable narrative in order to protect their beliefs. They will unironically assert that every single person in the history of Christianity who has ever died as a non-Christian was just too biased to accept the truth of Christianity. Why? Because that is the only way to protect Christianity from being proven false. The apologists who provide this response to the problem of divine hiddenness are ironically showcasing the same degree of bias they accuse other people of having, rejecting evident features of reality in order to protect their beliefs.